In this video, I'm going to build an app in UiPath Apps Studio using nothing but autopilot and an image. So you don't want to miss it. Let's get to it. Okay, so in my last video, what I did was I built an app using just a text prompt using autopilot. In this video, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to build it using an image. So we have an image of a form, and from that image, we're going to generate an app automatically and see how autopilot performs. So uh, there's a few things you need to make sure you have in place before you start this. Um, I'm working on a community edition platform. You can do that as well. It's free. You can't use it commercially, but it, uh, as I said in the previous video, it's a really good way to have sort of a playground to, to sort of work with some of these new technologies. So let's jump into the platform. So uh, here we are. I will just uh, go to the admin section and uh, then I'll go to the default tenant, which is my default tenant. And here we need to click services and we need to make sure that two things are enabled here, uh, the data service and also document understanding. And uh, data service, that is for storing the data that we'll be entering into our form. And document understanding is actually used in the background to interpret you know, the images or the PDFs that we feed into Autopilot to generate the app. So uh, we'll uh, make sure that uh, these are enabled. We can see them here in the, the main screen. So we'll go to Add Services. I will select Document Understanding and Data Service and click Add, Add. And we will just give it a minute to, to get those two things set up. Okay, I just did a quick refresh and now they are both uh, done. So now we can go into um, our data service and we can see here that the only entity we have is the system users entity. That is something that we are not in control of, uh, but we will uh, simply uh, open a new window where we will open apps studio. So inside of apps here, we can see we don't have any apps built. And this is where the fun begins. What I have in uh, my desktop is an image called thumbnail for some reason. Um, and that image is basically a very simple job application form. It's just an image I found online. And we'll see how well Autopilot is able to generate a form that looks like this. Um, so we'll close the form. And then I'll simply drag it into this uh, box here. And we can see Autopilot go to work right away. It's going to try to generate this form in the background. And we should see that uh, starting to happen. I'll just maximize the window here. We should see that start to happen in just a few seconds. We can see it says layout generated, initializing app. It's also going to try to, from the fields that it sees in the image, it's going to try to create an entity in the data service. An entity is sort of the equivalent of a data table or table in a database. And we can see now in the background how we have an application form and we can see some of the fields starting to pop up and it's now generating entities. And here we go, here we have the form. So how closely does this resemble the actual form that we wanted to generate? Let's uh, compare them. Let me resize this a little bit. And we can see that we have the, uh, it doesn't say job application form, but it does, does say application form. Uh, it has fields for first name and last name. It does have an email field. What position are you applying for? It's not able to interpret, you know, what is in this dropdown list because it's just an image. Um, if it was a PDF, it wouldn't be able to do it either, as far as I remember. Uh, the available date, uh, it did actually interpret that correctly and gave us uh, a, a date picker control here. The uh, current in employment status, well, we can see here in the uh, image that those are actually four sort of tick boxes or radio buttons, whatever you want to call them. And it gave us instead a drop down list here, hopefully with those four options in it. Uh, please provide your resume link. There's a field for that as well. And do you have any references? And there's a reference email field here as there is uh, here. But there's no place to put in the first and last name of the reference. So it did miss a couple of fields. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good still. Let's um, quickly jump into data service. And if I do a refresh here, we should hopefully see a job application form entity. It doesn't have any records. It says zero. That's because we haven't done anything yet. 
But if we go into the job application form, we can see the different um, fields that we wanted to um, uh, add data to. And we'll get back to this in just a little bit because, eh, no, let's just do it now. We'll create a new field because we wanted a reference first name as a text field. And I want to create another field, save this one. It didn't really get that. So we'll just create a new one. And we'll create a reference last name and save that as well. So now we have a couple of new fields down here, reference first name and last name, as well as we have the reference email that the autopilot actually did generate for us. So if we go into the main page again now, of course, we're missing a couple of fields. And the way this page has been built is basically it has a main page and that main page has what's called a page container in it. And basically that's sort of an area in which it can display a different page. That different page is the job application form page down here. And this is where we can actually edit the page. So we could down here by the reference email, we could add another couple of fields and why not do that now that we're at it. So I'll add a new control. That's going to be an input control. It's going to be a text box. And we'll just add it here at the bottom. And I'll do a copy paste. I will actually call this email control reference first name. And reference last name. And then we'll change, of course, the labels so that it says reference first name, last name. There we go. We could also uh, sort of uh, change the layout a little bit. We can see the uh, applicant's first and last name is inside a container. So let's add a container down here at the bottom as well for that. And then we can drag the reference first name and the reference last name fields into that container. And then we can select the container and then go to the style tab up here. And then we can sele select a horizontal layout. So we have them uh, next to each other like that. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to tell the action that has been generated for us in the background that we just added two new fields to the entity. So if we select the apply button here and go to events and edit the rule, nothing is showing up. We should be able to see these two new fields in here. So we go to the job application form. We make sure that the two new fields are here and they're not. From my experience, what we can do is we can um, actually exit the app, then edit the app again. And once we are inside the app again and we go to the entities that this app uses, we should be able to see the reference last, first name and reference last name. That also means if we go into the actual page where we wanted to uh, check the action on the apply button, go to events, edit the rule. Now we see the two new fields. And now I can then over here select what control do I want uh, to fetch the data from to be saved in this uh, entity record that we're creating. And we are looking for the reference first name value and the reference last name. Uh, value like that. But everything else was generated when we dragged the image into uh, autopilot. Uh, so, so it knows how to save all of the other data. It created all of the other fields, but it did miss a couple of fields. And yeah, that's, I guess, how it is. So if I now do a preview of our app, it's going to open a new tab in my browser. And in that tab, it's going to display this form hopefully including the two new first and last name uh, reference um, fields. And here we have all of the different fields. I can enter into uh, the form, my information. I want to apply for the position of boss. I can start, I don't know, tomorrow. I am uh, employed at the moment, resume link. 
something, something, LinkedIn, whatever. Do you have any reference uh, references? Um, my wife, <laughs> wife at wife dot com, and then uh, her first and last name, blah 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 blah. blah. And if I click apply here, seemingly nothing happens. That's because all that happens is that the data is served when I click the apply button. It didn't like there wasn't any action that would switch to a different page or show me a confirmation or anything like that. It simply does what it's told to do and what autopilot told it to do was create an entity record in data service. So if we go to uh, data service again, I'll just close the form here and have a look at the data. We can see that here there is um, an email, I'm employed, blah, 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 all of the data that we just entered into the form. So this was a very quick look at how you can build an app using nothing but an image or a PDF in your Path App Studio using Autopilot. And I think Autopilot, you know, this is the first iteration that we've seen publicly. And I think they've come a long way. Of course, it has flaws. It's not perfect. It's not something that's going to do all of your work for you but it can do some of your work for you. And it's, in some ways you can sort of compare this to an automation, right? It's automating the stuff that you don't want to do. I hate adding fields and doing layout and stuff like that. And Autopilot kind of did most of that for me. It also created all the fields, most of the fields in the uh, data service. And those are just things that take time if you have to do them manually. So I think it's looking very promising. I can't wait to see what's coming next. I know a lot of stuff is. So if you want to stay on top of that, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button if you kind of like this video. I hope you did. Um, and there's more videos coming out. Document understanding, uh, autopilot in studio for Windows, stuff like that. There's lots of stuff coming out this summer. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.